I don't know about you, but I didn't like this book. Um, I didn't like it at school, not quite sure why. And then I didn't like it as a 20 year old because as somebody that identified as a communist, I often found that the book was used against anybody that identified with communism. But I've revisited it and it's a real argument for the importance of uh, literature as something that speaks to us across time. And Orwell is an individual that I never particularly had a lot of time for and I've looked into him because other people have persuaded me that he's an important individual. Uh, and I find him a really compelling individual because of his constant commitment to freedom. He physically put his life on the line in the Spanish Civil War. And then right up until his death, he really fought for the ideas that he thought were important. And so he's really worth spending a little bit of time thinking about. But the reason I want to do this reading is because he wrote 1984 in Scotland on the Isle of Jura. And uh, in Scotland at the moment, we're going through a process of having a new piece of legislation introduced by the Scottish government um, without any real um, uh, process of democratic discussion. The Scottish government have introduced something called the hate crime bill. And hate crime seems like a particularly Orwellian kind of idea, the idea of a hate crime bill. In fact, uh, it sort of chimes with many of Orwell's own um, terms that he uses in 1984. The thing that's really interesting is that at the back of this book, and many of you will find that you have it in your bookshelves and you probably haven't picked it up for 20 years, there's an appendix. And in the appendix, he describes to us the principles of newspeak. And I, and I looked them up because a friend mentioned them to me and they seem so pertinent for contemporary Scotland uh, and for the attempts that are being made in Scotland today to control language uh, and to create a limited vocabulary for human beings to use and to create a sort of prescriptive standardized way of seeing the world. So Orwell is worthy of our attention as a freedom fighter, but also somebody that understands the relationship between language, restrictions on language, freedom of speech and freedom of thought. And freedom of thought is obviously uh, the key to any uh, free and democratic society. So here we are from the appendix, just to remind you, take you back to your school's days, Newspeak was the official language of Oceania and had been devised to meet the ideological needs of Ingsoc or English socialism. The purpose of Newspeak was not only to provide a medium of expression for the worldview and mental habits proper to the devotees of Ingsoc, but to make all other modes of thought impossible. It was intended that when Newspeak had been adopted once and for all and old speak forgotten, a heretical thought, that is a thought diverging from the principles of Ingsoc, should be literally unthinkable at least as far as thought is dependent on words. Its vocabulary was so constructed as to give exact and often very subtle expression to every meaning that a party member could possibly wish to express while excluding all other meanings and also the possibility of arriving at them by indirect methods. This was done partly by the invention of new words, but chiefly by eliminating undesirable words and by stripping such words as remained of any unorthodox meanings. And so far as was possible of all secondary meanings, to give a single example, the word free still existed in Newspeak, but it could be only used in statesmen such as, this dog is free from lice, or this field is free from weeds. It could not be used in its old sense of politically free or intellectually free, since political and intellectual freedom no longer existed even as concepts and were therefore of necessity nameless. Quite apart from the suppression of definitely heretical words, reduction of vocabulary was regarded as an end in itself and no word that could be dispensed with was allowed to survive. Newspeak was designed not to extend, but to diminish the range of human thought. And this purpose was indirectly assisted by cutting of the choice of words down to a minimum. 
So that's George Orwell for you. Very pertinent for today, I think. Thank you.